we present dataset distillation by matching training trajectories, a new state-of-the-art method for creating small synthetic datasets. Datasets for computer vision are typically of massive scale, often having up to tens of thousands of images per class. But how much of all this data is truly necessary? Surely there are redundancies in the samples and ways to compress such large datasets. Traditional data compression methods, such as principal component analysis, can reduce the size of the dataset by an arbitrary amount. However, this comes at the cost of completely obliterating the discriminative features of the images. On the opposite end, training a model on just a handful of real images will typically lead to catastrophic overfitting. What if, instead, we were to take our original dataset and learn from it a set of representative synthetic images, as few as 50, 10, or even just one image per class. This exactly describes the task of dataset distillation. Rather than training a model on the largely redundant real dataset, Wang et al originally proposed to instead distill the dataset into a much smaller collection of synthetic images, such that a model trained on this synthetic set will have similar test performance to a model trained on the full dataset. Aside from simply training a model more efficiently, these synthetic images have applications in other areas, such as dataset understanding, continual learning, neural architecture search, and even texture synthesis. Previous works have explored other methods of dataset distillation with varying degrees of success. In our new method, we distill our synthetic data by matching expert training trajectories. These expert trajectories are first trained on real data. We then initialize a student model at a sample time step t along the expert trajectory and train for many iterations on the synthetic data. Our distillation loss is then computed as the relative error in parameter space between the end of the student trajectory and a future point along the expert trajectory. This distillation loss is then backpropagated through all the student updates and used to update our synthetic images. Like previous methods, ours can distill CIFAR 10 into 50, 10, or as few as just one image per class. We can do the same on the significantly harder CIFAR 100, again distilling into 50, 10, and as few as just one image per class. Remarkably, many of the classes are still easily identifiable, as we see by zooming in on the streetcar, the crab, the TV, the clock, the orange, and the pear. Our method outperforms all others on CIFAR 10 with 1, 10, and 50 images per class, and likewise on CIFAR 100 with 1, 10, and 50 images per class. We also distill the higher resolution 200 class tiny ImageNet dataset again into 50, 10, and as few as 1 image per class. Again, we see that despite the large number of classes, many are still easily identifiable, such as the lampshade, hourglass, candle, black widow, school bus, and goose. Due to the dataset's high complexity, only one other method is capable of distilling tiny image net. Despite this, we again outperform this method on 1, 10, and 50 images per class. Our method is also capable of distilling even higher resolution images. We distill many 10 class subsets of ImageNet, including food, birds, geography, dogs, and fruit. You can find some of our follow-up work on tileable texture synthesis at the Computer Vision for Fashion Art and Design workshop. Thanks so much for watching and please see our website for more results.